This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the intuitive website building platform. More about them later. So what we're talking about in today's video is who do you want on your dream team? What four personality types of the Myers-Briggs 16 would you want to recruit to work with you in a, a group project, if you're hiring them for your business, you know, at school, whatever, what would the four personality types you would bring together be? This was a question asked to me by my buddy Joe. You can check out the video we did together down in the description. It's such an interesting question. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what four personality types I would take in this fantasy draft, if you will. And I wanna hear what you think of my picks and uh, who your picks would be if you were bringing together a group of people. Disclaimer, first of all, is that we're just talking about people as types stereotypically. Of course, you all know that we're talking about humans here. We're not talking about Pokemon. So everyone who is a certain type is not going to be the same. And type does not indicate skill or ability. So this is really just a thought experiment. It's not meant to say that people should only be thought of as their type. Because if I was hiring someone for realsies, I would be thinking more about, are they good at their job? Do I like working with them than anything else? I'm not, probably type wouldn't even come into my mind much. First up, I need someone to take care of business. Someone to be sort of like a manager slash agent. Someone to deal with negotiating prices, to uh, you know bring in new business, to interface with customers and you know possible vendors, et cetera, to get me the best price to make sure the numbers go up. So who would you pick in that situation? I know for me, first overall, I would choose an ENTJ to bring onto my team. The ENTJs are extroverted thinkers, so they're all about getting results. What works? Let's get the job done. What's gonna get money? What's gonna make things work? And you know, part of business is making money, so I, and I, this is not my strong suit, so I need to bring someone on the team who can look out for that part of the business. Now in managing an ENTJ, what you would need to look out for is that they feel encouraged, like they, they get positive reinforcement. You know, they're, the ENTJs are very good at being independent, doing their own thing, and you know, they don't need a bunch of touchy-feely, let's talk about our feelings stuff, but you don't want them to suddenly have an implosion where they're like, I'm not getting anything back from you, boss. I need to hear a good word, especially if they have any kind of failures. ENTJs need you to say, you got it, you're a boss, keep going. That, that would be kind of the management style you need to take with them. Now, an alternate, let's say the ENTJ wasn't available, who could you take there? Could be, you could take an INTJ there, similar enough. You could also take an ENFJ there, because they would have a lot of the same qualities as the ENTJ, they would just go about it in a different way. While we're here, let's support this channel and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Thanks for sitting through that. And don't you dare hit the thumbs up button. Don't, don't touch it, don't go there. Okay, so next, I would want someone to be back at the office who can handle administrative stuff, who can keep things running smoothly, and you know, to make sure the calendar is set up well, <laughs> make sure that uh, you know, the taxes are being paid, etc. Who do I want in that role? I would pick an ISFJ. Now, if you look at that video I did where I was originally asked this question, I think I said ISTJ, and I've, that would work fine. That would be a suitable alternative. But I think I would rather have the ISFJ because they will not only be able to keep things organized with their introverted sensing, and introverted sensing is good at organizing things in the physical world, but they also have extroverted feeling which would be good for kind of greasing the wheels of the business in, in a sense of making sure everyone's happy. So the ISFJ is the kind of person who is, you know, going to think, what is going to make everyone feel good? Oh, you know, it's so-and-so's birthday this, this weekend. Let's bring in a cake. Let's have an office party or whatever. And ISFJ, the management style you might want to take is, you know, making sure that they're not 
surprised with too many things and you don't throw too many new ways of doing things at them because they will be slow to adapt to that. And if there are times where you have to like rework something in your business, they have to do things a different way. You bring in a new computer program they have to use. You need to kind of baby them through that. That'll be the thing that you have to watch out for specifically with the ISFJs. And like I said, a suitable alternative would be an ISTJ um, or uh, maybe an ESFJ, but uh, you know, we don't want to get too many EJs on the team. We want to diversify a bit. So let's, let's do ISFJ there. All right, so next, because I run a YouTube channel, I need someone with good aesthetics, someone who can pick out my clothes for me, someone who knows that just a blank beige wall behind me is probably not the best background and who can help me out with that. I think I would go for a sensing type, someone who has extroverted sensing because that is, they are stereotypically the ones who are, who have the best eye. The, they have, just have a natural understanding for beauty and aesthetics. So I think I would bring on an ISFP. So you might think that's so close to the ISFJ, not really. The, there's only one letter off, but they're completely different types, right? An ISFP will be uh, good at kind of just doing their own thing. You give them, you'd say, I need you to figure out how to make me look better on screen. The ISFP will be able to be, be like, I got you. And because they are IP types with introverted feeling as their dominant function, they're going to come up with really unique stuff. I think ISFPs, you know, they, they're very quirky and unique. They, they know what's beautiful and what like objectively looks good, but then they put their own spin on it because it's about what they think is good, like what, what strikes their fancy. Of all the things that are objectively beautiful, how do they bring it together to a unique presentation that they like? So that's why I'd bring on an ISFP. An ESFP could also be a suitable alternative. The management style for the ISFP, you would have to be like, make them feel part of the group. You know, a, an ISFP could feel isolated and feel like, oh, I've, no one, no one likes what I'm doing here. Everyone's against me, kind of. So for an ISFP, you'd want to be like, we all appreciate what you're doing. What you're doing is helping us all work better. You're part of the group. You're included. I think that would help an ISFP feel really uh, good in your business. All right, lastly, the role I need to fill is someone who can be a, kind of a creative helper, someone who can be on the lookout for new ideas, like an idea generator. Someone who can be like, oh, I mean, I thought of all this stuff. Here, look at all, look at all this stuff I came up with. And also, you know, this is kind of a dual role here. Someone who can, you know, be poking holes in the way that things are done to kind of be constantly pushing uh, the business to innovate. So who would fit that role? I think I would take an ENTP as my fourth spot there, which is interesting because it's the opposite of the ISFJ. But the ENTP, they have extroverted intuition as their dominant function, so they are very good at seeing a bunch of possibilities and being like, what if we did this? What if we did this? What if we did this? And they're logical. They're thinking types, and it's introverted thinking, so it's very, you know, precise and meticulous. And so they will, they'll see a bunch of patterns. They'll see a bunch of ways that the business could go. They're also going to be kind of being like, why are we doing it this way? What if we tried something else? What, you know, th as opposed to the extroverted thinker who's going to be like, I don't care. It just gets results. The introverted thinker is going to be like, well, why don't we think about this a little bit more and make sure that everything is like watertight. So the ENTP would be great to have on board to be able to like give me a bunch of ideas for like creative content and like ways you could take the, the, the YouTube channel and stuff, different stuff you could do, but also be like, why are you doing it that way? A uh, suitable alternative, uh, I, th I said INFP last time, but I think I meant to save the INFP for this one. That could be a good alternative. ENFP could also work, even an INTP that would be good. Really, like an extroverted intuitive 
that's the real thing we're looking for. Someone who could just come up with a bunch of crazy ideas and then I can sort through them and be like, okay, that's too crazy, but this one is good. Now with an ENTP, you wanna make sure with your management style that you are keeping them on task because ENTPs might get a little bit, you know, scattered. They might wanna just jump from thing to thing. So as the, as the manager there, you've gotta make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, that they see a project through from beginning to end. Just make sure that they don't get too caught up in that strong suit of coming up with new possibilities, new things to do. Now here's something interesting. I picked two pairs of types that were, are the opposite of each other. I picked two NT types and two SF types and if we get a bit into the weeds of typology here, I, did, I left two whole quadra of types off of my team. But I do have every cognitive function represented in the top two functions of these four people, right? I think I do. Interesting. Was that a mistake on my part? I'd like to hear what you think about that. And you know what? When you have a business, you need a good website. So that's where this video sponsor, Squarespace, comes into the picture, man. You can get a stunning website that's easy to put together for whatever you got going. A business, maybe you have a blog that you, you want to write. What kind of business are you trying to run? What kind of website template are you looking for? Click that button. Look at all these templates you got. They all look great. They look stunning. You just pick one. Click it, just start typing in some text, dropping some photos. There's a bunch of other cool features that Squarespace offers as well. You can embed video blocks into your website from YouTube or Vimeo. Also, you can push content from your website to your social media. That's very convenient, keeps you engaged. You know, you can go to squarespace.com right now and get a free trial, and then when you're ready to actually step it up and buy that website or domain, you go to squarespace.com slash frankjames, which is my name, and get 10% off your first website or domain. Make sure you let me know in the comments who you want on your dream team. Who would you take in this fantasy draft? Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool and attractive.